Well, I admit my utter failure. She broke me. I've had people ask me be I've had people ask me before why it is that I've never responded to a Leanna K video. After all, I've taken on her personal wank sock, otherwise known as Ed the Sock before, so why not her? Well, basically, she's tedious. And her voice is like kitty litter in a trash compactor, or like a parrot caught inside a lawnmower. Leanna is one of those who talks a lot but really says very little, and there is simply not enough booze or cocaine in the world to get me through a whole Leanna K video. And I tried. I really truly did. Oh god how I tried. But I just couldn't do it. It's so... It's so vacuous and soul-sucking. She has nothing of value to say. Nothing. I could seriously feel myself aging as I listened to her diatribe over and over again. Oh, and while we're on the subject of your husband, Leanna, last year when I tore through his idiotic video, he ended it saying that his next video would be a staunch critique of feminism. Since by next, he apparently meant in a year or two, I can only imagine that his video by now must be a titanic epic of intellect and knowledge to justify the length of time it took to do it. So when can we look forward to him finishing it? I thought so. Anyways, Leanna has recently done a video addressed to people like me, so I felt that I should at least try to give it a go around, because I noticed that no one else was going to wade in and do it in the anti-feminist camp, and with good reason. See, Leanna's thing is that she believes that no one pays attention to her because everyone unjustifiably thinks that all feminists are evil. In reality, anti-feminists don't pay attention to her because she's not worth paying attention to. She doesn't quite grasp her own irrelevance to the conversation. If it wasn't for the fact that she has a couple of fanboys of hers on Kotaku in action who feel the need to post every single freaking video she ever does, I wouldn't even bother to pay attention to her myself. But I felt like challenging my fortitude for a little bit, and so I tried to last as long as I could under the assault on my sanity and this is what I came up with. <sighs> okay, let's do this. All right, I'm gonna start this video the way I tend to go in the middle of videos. And you know, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Don't freak out. This is a response to some comments I've been getting lately. I'm appealing to people who I think I can reach, so don't get offended about what I'm about to say. It's an appeal to intellect, not emotions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys don't even know how funny that part is yet. Leanna, as a gesture of good faith, let me explain something important to you. When you start prefacing your words by saying things like, this is an, this is an appeal to intellect and not emotion, that's almost always a sign that you should think harder about what you're saying. Because a person really trying to appeal to intellect and not emotion wouldn't need to say it. They would just let the argument stand on its own merits. It's like when someone says, I'm not a racist, but... Instantly you know that what they're going to be saying next is going to be extremely racist. Because otherwise, it's a pretty safe bet that they wouldn't have felt the need to cover their ass like that. You can continue to virtue signal, or you can do the right thing and be effective. Your choice. And there we have it. Only took you one sentence. You can continue to virtue signal, or you can do the right thing. And by the right thing, I mean what I tell you the right thing is, as opposed to what you say the right thing is, which is, after all, the crux of the disagreement between the camps. Precisely the way an intellectual would present their, their thesis, and totally not an appeal to emotion at all, or an attempt to shame. Also, totally not a false dichotomy, a straw man, or a smarmy and condescending. As a side note, kitten, if you're going to make an entire video trying to convince your enemies to help you and that you're not one of the angry, cranky, bitchy feminists they don't like, going on a whinging bitch fest rant about how they're bad people and misrepresenting their positions might not have been the best option. 
but I'm sure it scratches your victim itch nicely. Not that I would ever think you would play the victim. If I were a conspiracy theory type, I'd swear that anti-feminists were agents of the dwork side. Okay, kitten. I know you're going to keep bringing this up, so let's put this all on the table now. You do grasp the fact that there is a lot more to the history of feminism and all of the other things that it's done than Andrea Dworkin, right? I mean, for someone who did a video series on the guide to feminism, you seem to be fairly laser focused on one specific person. Like, to the point of pet names. Cause, I'll tell you something, I can count on about one hand the number of times that I've heard Dworkin mentioned or talked about in more than just brief passing in anti-feminist circles. But you seem to drag that bitch up out of the ground and parade her coffin around for the village to see every frickin' chance you get. I realize feminists tend to be fairly one note, but you don't even have the decency to play a new instrument. Believe it or not, our perspective on feminism actually extends beyond a fat lesbian prude from the 70s, even if yours doesn't there, pumpkin. But please, stop projecting your ignorance onto us, Liana. Okay? The radical feminist fringes of the women's movement consumed by fear, anger, and hate. These two groups sound so similar these days that they might as well be hitting themselves in the face with horseshoes. The horseshoe effect is in full effect. I don't think you understand how horseshoe theory works, Liana. Horseshoe theory is applied to political ideologies on opposing ends, but anti-feminism is, is not a political ideology. It's a rejection or opposition to the political ideology of feminism not an ideology in and of itself. It's meant, to refer, it's meant to refer specifically to the left and right sides of the political spectrum, both of which spawn anti-feminists, unlike feminism, which is pretty much an abomination created by the left. So you're going to have to explain how you reconcile that with your, comp with your comparison. But I'm guessing your rationalization is going to involve the phrase, can't hear you, la la la. You have no idea what you're talking about, and I'm only a few seconds into this. Fuck me! Somebody get me some heroin! But yes, 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 I know, I know, I know. You're going to try and cover your idiocy with the claim that you were being metaphorical and drawing a comparison to how it is kind of similar to horseshoe theory that both sides opposing that both sides opposing sides sound like one another. Well, okay, Liana. Being open to criticism, I will consider your premise if you first answer me one thing. How exactly do the two sides sound the same? What do they say that's similar? Did the anti-feminist make a hashtag saying kill all feminists? How many anti-feminists are advocating for putting feminists into concentration camps? Or claiming that feminists cannot be victims of rape? Or that all feminists should be jailed? Or silenced? Or not allowed to speak? How many on my side are blocking feminists from speaking at events calling the employers of people who disagree with our positions and getting them fired, can you point me to any of the people on my side of the discussion that are doing this? Can you point me to any who are trying to pass laws to make criticizing anti to make criticizing anti-feminism illegal? Or ones trying to change rape law to make feminists able to be convicted of rape or harassment just by being accused? Because that's what feminists are doing, Liana. So how exactly are both sides similar? I'm sure you have some evidence to present to us all, right, Liana? 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 Now, you could make the argument that both sides are similar and that the adherents of both sides have a motivation of hate, anger, and fear. Which might be true, but there is, are several principal distinctions that this comparison ignores. For the sake of brevity, I'll just point out the most relevant one. You see, Kitten, the feminists we're talking about are acting out of hate and anger with the desired goal of silencing dissent, discriminating against people that disagree with their worldview, imposing a totalitarian ideology upon us all, and gaining supremacy. The anti-feminists are full of hate and anger, of the people who are trying to silence all dissent, discriminate, impose totalitarian ideology, and achieve supremacy. Do you grasp the distinction here? One is angry and trying to oppress, the other is angry because someone is trying to oppress them. 
For some reason, many anti-feminists think it's perfectly rational to define the entirety of the modern women's movement by the actions and philosophies of its most radical non-scientific exceptions. If I were a conspiracy theory type, I'd swear that anti-feminists were agents of the dwork side. These two groups sound so similar these days that they might as well be hitting themselves in the face with horseshoes. Whether by willful ignorance or being blinded by hate and fear themselves, anti-feminists miss the point entirely. And there, if you look carefully through the trees, you will be treated to one of the rarest species to inhabit the internet. The feminist harpy. The feminist harpy spends her days crying shrilly into the aether gathering bits of straw to form a rough representation of the male species. Then, in a bizarre display, the feminist harpy will flutter about her male effigy composed of straw and flap her wings, frantically beating on the straw until she exhausts herself. Naturalists have yet to understand the reasons behind this odd behavior, but believe it may be the result of the feminist harpy's well-known inability to relate to others not of its kind. Come. Let us watch the feminist harpy as it conducts its ritual. By treating the nutbags like the real feminists. As opposed to what you would call radicals. Well, they would say that you're not the real feminists, so what exactly are our criteria here? Because if you have no criteria that we can use to judge who isn't, who isn't is not a feminist, whose fault is it that no one on the outside can tell the difference? Right, everyone else's fault. Sorry. Do you guys see the problem of doing a Leanna K video? Do you have any idea how much I'm holding back just for the sake of brevity? I could stop this video on every sentence she says and point out how utterly stupid this is. It's like Justin Dennis times 10. She is not saying anything of substance. Why do people listen to this woman? Uh, why are you in your underwear, Leanna? You may be asking. Well, it's not exactly underwear. It's an old belly dance costume which is shiny underwear. Leanna, you may be asking, what are you doing? Well, there is a method to this madness. When I made my last video, where I uh, tried to bring peace and harmony to the world by showing cleavage, someone pointed out to me, what if you're an ass man? You're just showing boobs. You are correct. Oh, right. They're helping them implement their radical agenda. So then how do you explain all the nut jobs that made up feminist feminism before. Again, I refer you back to the suffragettes. For that matter, how do you explain Betty Friedan and Dworkin? They and their kind completely predate this kind of blowback that you're complaining about. Those feminists got into power long, long before my side came along. It was your supposed majority of reasonable feminists that allowed them to spread and take things over. The people that you're talking to have only been around for, what, 20, maybe 25 years at most? And only had a major social platform for the last five to ten. What the fuck were you lazy bitches doing all this time then? Are you suggesting that somehow anti-feminists have reached back into time and affected the past perhaps? Because again, these few, as you call them, fringe elements have been in control over feminism for the better part of a hundred years. But I guess it was somehow all the fault of those horrible anti-feminists who put them all in power like you say. Gee, I can't imagine why they might not want to help you. Maybe if you took at least a second to actually support or explain anything you're rambling about and make a real case. How about that bimbotron, as opposed to gish galloping all over the place? Are you going to actually make a coherent argument at any point in this? Liana? 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 They're helping to shout down non-radicalized feminists around the world so we can't get much done because all the oxygen is being sucked up by radicals who don't actually want change. So what you're telling me then is that essentially you're the most useless group of fuckers known to man. Even though there are, according to you, millions of good noble feminists who vastly outnumbered the others, even though feminism was a multi-million dollar industry, possibly billion dollar industry, one of the largest political lobbies that can stand before the UN influence the policies and laws of every major nation on the planet to the extent that saying you don't support feminism can be instant career suicide for a politician. 
even though feminist ideology permeates and occupies the majority of the news media in the western world, a few mostly middle class assholes on the internet are fucking you up. That's your kryptonite, is it, Liana? You must be the most incompetent group of sad stories some bitch has ever born if that's what bothers you. Supposedly millions of you can't corral a small few within your own movement with all of that power that you wield because of a few people on the internet with social and legal power equivalent to a wheelchair-bound hobbit with Parkinson's. Seriously, you have a massive army and it's the hobbit that is standing in the path of you. Do you actually listen to yourself? It's an appeal to intellect, not emotions. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. If your issue is really just with radical third wave feminism. Keyword there. If. Why are you giving it so much attention? You mean aside from the aforementioned multi-million dollar industry, political power, UN laws being passed, government of policy, etc.? Can't imagine. We're funny like that. The rest of us could really use the help getting established as a viable alternative. Yeah, and see, there's your problem. You think that we want you established because, well, you're an idiot who has never actually paid attention to a single thing that the side that you're trying to talk about has actually been fucking saying. This entire rant exists as a testament to your vapid bimbosity. As much as I know that this will go right over that little head of yours yet again, let me take a moment to explain this to you. We do not want feminism at all. It is not that people don't like radical feminism. It is that no one likes feminism. Do you grasp the distinction? I've done entire videos where I explain why all feminism is bad, regardless of whether you are a radical or a moderate. So have many others. Anti-feminists have done videos addressing your own brand of feminism and why it's wrong. Same with the brands of feminism of many other brain-dead gyno peasants. When we say that feminism is bad, we mean you too. We criticize you too. All the time. But your head is lodged so far up your own vinegar scented vagina that it's become impossible for you to hear anything but your own inner soundtrack. By feeding that beast, you're making it stronger. Truly mainstream feminists are working with girls to build their self-esteem. How? Where? Who? Actually, wait a minute here. Why are truly mainstream feminists like you not fighting the radical feminists, if they are indeed the source of all your problems? I would think that would be like item one on the roster. I mean, if you got rid of them, then all of that boundless wealth, influence, and money that they have could finally all be freed to help you. You know, you real feminists. The one true Christians. Further, according to you, if you did that, then, if you did that, then anti-feminists wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Surely the untold millions who make up the mainstream could spare some time and a few hands to go down to the UN for a tick and have a talk with some of the people there. What do you think, Liana? Liana? Lee? Yeah, fuck, you know how this goes. We're working with adult women to encourage accountability, authenticity, and assertiveness that <laughs> Accountability, authenticity. Which is why you're doing a video right now massively misrepresenting people's arguments, position, and the nature of reality itself. Blaming the critics of feminism for feminism's problems. Who exactly was it in feminism that was teaching you about accountability and authenticity, Liana? Because I think they should be fired. And self-esteem. What fucking self-esteem problems do girls have? Have you ever talked to a modern female? Self-esteem is hardly a problem. All society ever does is tell them how great they are, how capable they are, how boys are stupid, throw rocks at them, girls are sugar and spice and everything nice, girls are more moral than boys, more empathetic than boys. Can you show me in a modern western culture where it's even acceptable to criticize girls or women with the slightest degree of harshness? Or, just spitball in here, maybe some girls might have low self-esteem because there's this ideology that constantly tells them that the world is out to get them and that no matter how much they try, they can never expect to succeed because society is completely stacked against them. That they're only valued in normal society for their looks or as baby makers. Maybe someone is telling them that everywhere they go, they are in constant danger of rape or assault and have always been seen as inferior. Because if there was some ideology telling them that, we should really oppose that, huh, Liana? 
Self-esteem is just an all-encompassing thought terminating cliche that you use to justify why women don't do male things like you want them to. Gets eroded by traditional female socialization. What socialization where? Again, women are, are more moral. Women are sugar and spice and everything nice. Women are to be protected by men. A man must doff his cap to a woman. A man must not speak ill words in a lady's presence. Give his seat to a woman. A man can be beaten for merely upsetting a woman. Traditional socialization is all about catering to women's needs. People are teaching girls in places like Afghanistan, achieving gender parity in political cabinets. Meanwhile, no one is teaching boys who are greatly falling behind in schools. Young boys in those countries are going to work at young ages to support their female relatives. And it's not because those women are not educated, educated and can't do it themselves. It's because the social system in that country requires the men of the house to support the women. Which is why the women in those countries can go to those schools that you're talking about and get that feminist sponsored education. An education which they probably won't use anyways because they'll just get married and have a guy work for them. I'm curious, who do you think is the oppressed one in this scenario? Do you realize also, by the way, that groups like the Taliban and Boko Haram are opposed to both boys and girls going to schools? And prevent both. Persecute both. Before Boko Haram made the news by kidnapping all those girls about a month before they had gone to sc they had gone into a school and engineered a mass slaughter of the male students. No one made a peep about that. But then they captured some girls and suddenly everyone has heard of them and is standing against them to protect the young girls. Did you even know that it happened, Liana? I did. I even wrote an article for it on my blog. The sad thing about you, though, is that you really don't see the problem in what you are proposing. All you see is that girls are not going to school, even though in many cases there are more women in universities in those countries than men. You don't see the men. You don't see the men that work hard so those girls don't have to. That's invisible to you. That's why people find you and yours so repugnant, because you take situations that are harmful and disadvantageous to both genders or to mostly men, and all you see is the women being hurt, not the men being hurt, or the women being privileged, then, after half-assedly paying attention to the scenario, you come up with some overly simplistic bargain basement solution that tends to involve as little actual work or hardship on the part of women as possible. And when it doesn't work, you whine to us about the fruits of your own incompetence. Liana, no one needs you. No one needs your brand of feminism. You are not merely useless, you are actively harmful. And to make matters worse, your harm is not that of the villain who twirls their mustache. Your harm is that of the self-righteous bitch who adopts an air of morality and hides their depredations behind it. It's the worst and most insidious type of harm because the people like you who do it are so secure in your superiority and your self-bestowed moral license that you cannot be bothered to ever countenance the possibility that you might be wrong. This is why you don't get help from people like me, Liana. Because I believe that people like you should be reviled and spit upon. I would truly take a dozen Dworkins over you. And encouraging body positivity in the media. But not for boys. You can still shame them. You may not like the way individual activists and educators do these things, but I think we can agree that the attempts are in general good things. No, we can't, you stupid bimbo. A solution to a problem that either doesn't exist won't fix the problem, most likely will make it worse, or will cause an entirely new problem is not a good thing no matter how many well intentions went into it. Good intentions are not an excuse for narrow-mindedness and stupidity, which is the problem people have with feminists. You are narrow-minded and stupid, and when people try to point out that you're wrong, we get shit like this video. And they're certainly not harmful. Yeah, teaching women who are already raised to have an overinflated sense of self-worth, entitlement, solipsism, to be even more entitled and solipsistic, then putting them in positions of power and authority? Pfft, what could go wrong? Teaching and educating women in a country while ignoring the entire other half of the population that's uneducated and struggling and who the society relies upon for all the heavy work and lifting? Pfft, what could happen there? Seriously, how deep am I in this intellectual drivel? Fuck!